Wow, such a beautiful song. And it brought back a wonderful memory. When I was in seminary, I had a professor named Tapiwa Mucherera. And he had a daughter named Miso. Guess who she thought that song was about? Her, because the Bible told me so. And she'd let you know that's my song. Because the Bible tells me so. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 31. I'll be reading verses 25 through 31. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word this morning. Now, I told the congregation at, the, uh, at eight o'clock that in honor of all our mothers today, I wrote a 45 minute sermon, but I'm only gonna share 15 minutes of it. And I got a standing ovation, nah, they didn't. But as we continue to celebrate our mothers this morning, I'd like to ask our mothers a question. Have you ever tried living up to this standard set in Proverbs 31? Many of you may have tried, but it's a pretty high mark to measure up to. The introduction to this chapter states that these are the sayings of King Lebunel, an oracle that his mother taught him. Now Webster's Dictionary defines this sort of oracle as a person giving wise and authoritative decisions or opinions. I would imagine that this was likely a mother hoping that none of the girls her son was currently dating would ever measure up to her oracle. She probably wanted only the very best for her son. And she hoped that one day her son would find that perfect wife. Nevertheless, we are left with the impression that this sort of wife is the approved standard version. She is capable, she's hardworking, she's family-centered, trustworthy, a good businesswoman, a great cook, generous, prepared, discreet, praiseworthy, wise, and beautiful. Wow. If she was indeed a real woman, all things to all people and extraordinarily perfect, then it must have been exhausting to be this woman. Now, I can imagine that it takes all that you have to be a loving mother. Paul wrote, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Though often quoted in weddings, this is the kind of unwavering love mothers give. Even when it's hard, a mother's love can go beyond any limits we thought would be possible. Love is patient. Even when you have to explain things over and over again. Now you may not think this or may not know this, but my brothers and I were hard headed. And I can't tell you how many times my mother said things over and over and over again to us, but she was patient with us for the most part. Then love is kind with family members who are sick and can't care for themselves. I, I cherish those memories that I have of my mother when I was feeling sick, when I was not up to it, and she'd come in there and nurse me back to health. And love doesn't want what others have or promote itself it teaches children to do the same. Your mother's love seeks to bring honor, not dishonor, to your children and spouse. You bite your tongue when you know your temper is short and forgive an unlimited number of times. And my mother forgave us many, many, many times. 
Jesus was raised by a loving mother. And one of my favorite moments in the New Testament is when Mary is at the wedding feast in Cana of Galilee. She was frustrated because Jesus wouldn't turn the water into wine. But then after weighing his options, Jesus decides that it'd be best to go ahead and perform this miracle. Now, I would have loved to have been there to see the looks pass between mother and son that night. My mother could look at me and tell me something without ever opening her mouth, especially when I was in church misbehaving. She had a way of communicating with us. She would look at you go. And you knew if you didn't stop whatever it was you were doing when you got home, it was going to be tough. And, and then we see Mary at the crucifixion. Disciples may scatter, followers may be in hiding, but a mother stands by her hurting child. When the rest of the world is walking out, a mother is walking in. In fact, Mary is a rich tapestry of what real motherhood is like. A lot of excitement, followed by years of hard work and moments of intense pain. But through it all, our mothers are there for us. And Jesus felt a mother's nurturing love for his people. Listen to what he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Christ explains that when your children are hurt or afraid, you want to wrap your loving arms around them and heal the hurt. Mothers often wish they could protect their children from any and all harm, but sometimes as they grow, they reject a mother's offer of comfort and shelter. And it's hard to watch your children hurt and not be able to intervene on their behalf. In this passage, Jesus expressed the cry of a mother's heart that longs to shelter and protect children. And letting go of your love will sometimes break your heart. Then she went off and sat about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. In this passage, Hagar had been kicked out of her home and was unable to protect her young son. Her family was broken. Her son might die and she was powerless to do anything. So she weeps as she is crying out to God. As children grow older, mothers can often feel like they cannot control what happens to their children anymore. There comes a time in every mother's journey where she has to let go and give her children to God's care, even if it breaks your heart. God heard Hagar in the desert. He hears your cry for your children and your grandchildren. Even when your heart is broken, you are not alone. And a mother's love is Christ-like. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Any mother would lay down her life for her children. When you give up your time, you delay your dreams, you work to provide for your children's future and spend hours on your knees praying for their safekeeping, you exhibit the kind of sacrificial love Jesus demonstrated in his own life. And I've often said that the reason that both my parents had to have both their knees replaced was because they spent a lot of time on their knees in prayer. Probably more for me than my other brothers, but... I thank God for parents who pray for their children. And a mother's love always points us back to God. These commandments I give you today are to be on your hearts and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. The Bible verse about mother says that talking about God's word can be done in the living room, in the car, at bedtime, and at breakfast. This practice helps make God's word known in your children's life daily. And it has them thinking about God at all times. I still remember my mother sharing scripture with my brothers and I. 
in the morning when she would wake us up to go to school or to go to church, she'd walk in there and she'd go, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then I'd roll over and say, do we have to rejoice just yet? <laughs> but she loved to quote scripture to us and wake us up. And then when my brothers and I were trying to kill each other, she'd walk in and she'd go, be ye kind one to another. And if you didn't listen to what she was saying, well, you'd learn some other scripture too. <laughs> like spare the rod, spoil the child, that one. And then when we were hurt by something that didn't go our way, she would comfort us and say, and this too shall pass. And eventually children will recognize the strength of a mother's love. Her children arise and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Many days being a mom probably feels like a thankless task, but your children know there's no one else on the planet who loves them like you do. Even if your family doesn't always verbalize their gratitude, know that God sees the hard work that you put in for your family. And a mother's work matters. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Whether your job as a mother is caring in your home for you and your children, or you hold a job outside the home, what you do for your family is something for which you should be praised and honored. The Bible consistently asks followers to honor and love their mothers. We see it in Exodus 20, verse 12, honor your father and your mother. And in Leviticus 19, 3, everyone shall revere his mother and father. Being a mother might be one of the hardest jobs on the planet, but thankfully, there are plenty of Bible verses about a mother's love that reveal the glory of the job. And they reveal to us that a mother's love is fierce. A mother will do anything for her children, fight any battle, stand against any foe, tolerate discomfort, and walk through burning coals, if need be, for their children. And one thing I learned about watching my mother, you don't mess with a mother's child. So mothers, let me remind you this morning. Mothers, you are needed. Your children need you to teach them no matter how old they are. Whether you are a mother by natural childbirth or a mother through adoption or marriage or a spiritual mom, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And secondly, mothers, you are loved. You are our children's greatest example of God's unconditional love. And whether you have been told lately or not, your children love you and we love you too. And lastly, mothers, you are enough. Be who God created you to be and love the children that God has placed into your care. We have a lot of ladies here who care for our children each and every week, and we are so blessed to have that, mother, that motherly care and love being expressed to our children. They, 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 they're going to be products of that one day, and we're so blessed to have each and every person here that does that. You, and you don't have to try to be anyone else but who God has created you to be. And that will be enough. Amen. Let's pray together this morning. Loving Father, we ask you this morning to bless every mother and grandmother and great-grandmother here today with your richest blessings. Confirm in their heart and spirit today that the love that they have so freely given their children and grandchildren has been received. Remind them today that they are loved, that they are valued, and that they are cherished in the eyes of their children and grandchildren.